known as being approved in your hospital. You've used uh, uh, Zetagliptin when you first came, Vendagliptin, I think, is also approved. You use Saxagliptin and probably Lenagliptin also. So just uh, because you have a lot of doctors here, I'm sure you use much more combined than I have used uh, uh, on my own. So we'd like to hear your opinion on these molecules and how it is changed the way we treated our diabetes. In general, about the people, not any particular drug. Sir, thank you very much. It is a very elaborative and good discussion. Uh, there are three or four questions. One is this uh, citaclifting as a reduction of HB1C even up to the tune of 1.4 percent HB1C reduction, whereas the saxa is only 0.6 to 0.7 percent. Number one. Second important question. Uh, Can I answer that one by one? I'll, I'll forget all of it. Your reduction of HB1C depends on your baseline HB1C. If you have an HB1C of 10%, DP4, all the DP4s will reduce it by 2%. Okay, but these studies, I mean, I, I'm sure you could have seen, majority of them around 8.5 to 9%. So you get on an average, as far as the 4 DP4 inhibitors are concerned, efficacy wise, there is not much to choose from. I can tell you that. I've used it in clinic practice. If you're using bildegliptin twice a day, not once, twice a day, if you're using zetagliptin 100 milligram, if you're using saxagliptin 5 milligram, and you're using lenagliptin 5 milligram, which is a full dosage, there is not much to choose as far as the efficacy of the drug is concerned. On an average, approximately 1% will be your drug. Of course, as I mentioned, it will depend on your baseline age you are So, the 1.4 and maybe in a particular study, one study over here showed 9.9. So, Efficacy wise, I don't think there's much to choose from. Excellent. Next question. Second important question is this is a fixed tax combination. Yes. So it is not uh, justified to advise this or to recommend this fixed tax combination because when the optimum level will not be achieved, then what will do? Because we cannot increase the dose. No, you can. They have, you have two times, so 500 and 1000 milligram. Yeah, 5 okay. plus 500. 5 plus 500, 5 plus 1000. So you have two options. You can start with 5 plus 500, and then you can go up to 5 plus 1000. So the option. The problem with, with the fixed dose, non sustained release, which is found in Sita and Vilda, is that both of them are immediate relief. And I have been telling the company for the last three years since they launched it, that please make it fixed dose combination. Uh, extended release. They are working on that technology. Problem is they will bring a fixed dose extended release later on. Biggest problem is as soon as you give them anything more than 500, they were, it is available as 5 plus 500, 5 plus 850, 5 plus 1000. If you give them 850 or 1000, I don't know what your experience, my experience is, they will immediately get nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea and will stop. Them. I cannot use more than 5 plus 500 in any of my patients. A single dose. I have to use 5 plus 500. I can use it twice a day, but never I can use more than 5 plus 500 in a single dose, which will be possible in this medication. As you can see, as you saw, the more the number of times you give the drug, the more the patient was non compliant. The more the patient non compliant, the patient will not achieve their targets. So, why don't you try the fixed dose combinations 5 plus 500 and see what happens? So how, whether, my experience is that I use the drug separately. Now, I use Saxa Vilda separately, metformin separately. Sustain release, XR thousands, and patient tolerance is very well. But as soon as I give them twice a day, immediately, they get nausea, diarrhea, and they stop the drug and they come back. I want to change. One more question. Yeah. Third important question is this DP4 uh, inhibitors, uh, okay, but regarding the hypoglycemic effect. But uh, what's about the other cytokines like neuropeptide Y and the substance P? Because if we inhibit that DPP4, then what? Because this what I have asked this uh, substance P and neuropeptide Y cytokines. So there is chance of increase of these uh, things in our body. 
Is there any study what uh, the bad effect or negative effect? This is effect? a new drug. Studies are going on. The role of those uh, neuropeptide Y and EYY, those have not been established as yet. Work is going on. Hopefully within a year or maybe a couple of years, we'll have the answer whether these. There have been studies which claim, both Hilda and uh, they have also claimed that it reduces beta cell apoptosis, but that is in animals. No one has been able to show it in human beings. But there are indirect ways of finding that out through the HOMA, uh, B model and all that. And they have been encouraging reports that they actually preserve beta cell function. So this is a new drug, it will take, research takes long time. So maybe not only for this drug, for any DP before, maybe in a, another two, three years time, we will know whether they actually have any effect on the beta cell apoptosis, apoptosis or not. And that is the reason it is probably has some effect is shown on the durable durability. That two years you will find that the majority of the patients still remain at target. That is one of the indirect ways of finding out whether the drug is durable or not. Sulfonylurea is an excellent drug. I still use sulfonylurea. But if you look at the curve of sulfonylurea, you find that the APS rates come out sharply, then it goes up. That is the problem. So sulfonylurea, I now use it when I want to bring down the blood sugar quickly. And then I take off the sulfonylurea. Keep them on the DP4 metformin combination. And keep them going. So that once my target is reached, I take it off. Now, of course, again, at a later stage, I might have to push it. They are not foolproof drugs. At some time, your beta cell will fail. Your metformin, uh, DP4 has to fail. The patient will have to move on to a sulfonylurea combination or maybe an insulin. But at least these first five, ten years of their life, if you are free of hypoglycemia, that is one of the biggest advantage things uh, benefits the patient. Quality of life is improved. The work is improved. Uh, the, it does not interfere with the work. If you are not off sick, uh, they don't uh, have uh, absence because of work. They, oh, and as, as you know from the UK PDS and I what we've learned that they have a metabolic memory. So first five, ten years of your diabetic life, if you keep your blood sugar very tightly controlled later complications are less. That is what we want to do. We want to give drugs which does not cause hypoglycemia, but not the blood sugar, and patients are compliant with the drugs. And then you can keep the right target and then reduce complications. And this, uh, this drug, the other drugs usually these are metabolized by the uh, cytochrome, this uh, P450. But here, the metabolism is in a different room. Yeah, that is true. So what I'm asking, is there any drug-drug introduction? There are some drug-drug introduction. I think uh, it is not in this list. Uh, um, uh, now, which one we should be cautious that this should not be given? He'll uh, give you a list. I don't remember the list. Normally, there's a little list. He'll give you the list of the drugs. Thank you, Dr. Malik. It's a nice question. Actually, so far as sex activity is concerned, when it is metabolized, it is metabolized through the CYP3A4 system. So far as mild and moderate inhibitors of the CIP3A4 is concerned, you don't have to adjust the dose. But with some of the antifungal, some of the antiretroviral drugs, like ketoconazole and if you saw some of the uh, retroviral drugs, you have to adjust the dose to 2.5. But one thing I have to assure you that, because this is inhibition and the metabolism, it's, there is a chance of sex activity. That's why they recommend need to decrease the dose. But there are studies where sex activity has been used at a dose of 400 mg for a period of 14 days and there is no effect. So you can say even if by mistake, if you are given uh, 5 mg to a person who is taking those drugs, you should not, as a level you should not give, but even by mistake you have given, this is not that toxic because it has been proved 400 mg, 14 days continuously, there is no ill effect with sex activity. Uh, one of the safety parameters with this drug is, with all the DP4, take a dose 20 to 30 times your recommended dose, there is no hypoglycemia. So your patient can take a whole file of uh, on but he will not, never get hypoglycemia. If you take 40, overdose of 40 tablets, are, uh, so you can rest assured that the patient is not going to get hypoglycemia. Because 20 to 30 times the like highest recommended dose, none of these patients have had hypoglycemia, whether it's been Sita, Spilda, Saxa, even Lina. As far as the safety of the drug is concerned, see, after the luciclodazone problem, when they found that the cardiovascular events are raised, AD has said, you must bring a drug into the market which is number one safe. Safety has now come first. You cannot bring a drug into the market if it 
is found to be unsafe. That is why they have said, why, why are no drugs coming? Because they have said you must give two years cardioceptive data before you can actually apply to the FDA for an approval. So therefore, all these companies, they are also having cardioceptive data trials going on. They will have to give it to, uh, to the FDA before it is uh, said that it is cardiac safe. So this is one of the, um, uh, after that, so the first thing is the drug has to be safe. Then the efficacy of the drug will, will come. So that's why we need a drug which is number one safe, and number two, the second criteria will be effectiveness of the drug. And that is why, in spite of being so expensive, it's one of the highest prescribed drugs in the throughout the world, even in India. It is, they have all the four uh, uh, EP4 companies actually keep breaking their records every year. Everyone is breaking records every year. Why is it? Because we are prescribing the drug to such a number. Because patients are happy with the drug. Because the biggest problem is they never get hypoglycemic interference. That is the biggest advantage of the drug. What is your experience regarding these uh, complications like UTI or liver TI or nasopharyngeal? Yes, you are right. You could, this is increased incidence of uh, urinary tract infections. But compared to placebo, it is not great. Of course, if a patient is on, uh, is control C. UTI is a common complication of uncontrolled type 2 diabetes. Okay? Now, if the patient is well controlled, in spite of that, he's getting recurrent UTIs. Of course, you should be thinking of changing the thing to a different drug. Okay? But uh, nasopharyngitis is another one. But compared to placebo, the various studies have shown that the incidence is not very much different. See, even a person who's on placebo will get uh, some nasopharyngitis. So compared to placebo, the rate is not much higher. But if someone is well controlled, in spite of that, he gets better nutrients. That is the only place where you need to consider. But if the patient is uncontrolled and gets UTI, that is not due to the drug. That is due to the uncontrolled diabetes itself. 